Um, the next item, we have the privilege today of a presentation by some pretty extraordinary um, young people. Uh, Hidden Valley Future Business Leaders of America, that organization has done extraordinary things in the last couple of years, getting recognition not just at the state level, but I think nationally as well. And, um, they'll, they'll take this opportunity, just a couple of minutes, to provide us with an overview of what they've done, what they're doing, and what they plan on doing in the future. Please just state your names and uh, your own name about Thank you very much. My name is Dale Fisher. I am a uh, business math teacher at Hidden Valley High School, as well as a co-AS, excuse me, the co-ASB advisor and co-FPLA advisor, and I'm also a track and field coach. Uh, with me today are Miss Morgan Hansen and Miss Ryland Hansen, and they'll tell you a little bit more about themselves in a moment. First thing I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about our FBLA program. Uh, I've been involved with FBLA since I started Hidden Valley in 2004, and along with my co-advisor, Mr. Chris Pendleton, we've had quite a uh, round of success over the last several years. And um, we are really excited about the opportunities that our school district, as well as our county, gives us to help reach young people and help them to turn into fine professionals that hopefully will someday go off to college obtain degrees and come back to our fine county and help bolster what we have here already. A couple things about what FBLA is. It's a business organization for students. Uh, there are events at both the local, national, and regional levels. We have approximately a quarter of a million members nationwide with over 6,000 chapters. Uh, we hold leadership conferences every year in various locations throughout the United States and this year we're heading to Anaheim, California at the end of June uh, through the first part of July for a national competition. There are over 60 competitive events in FBLA, and they range from events that are speaking events, to testing events, to events that involve both a report and a speech, as well as debate events. And they span the full spectrum of business. So it's a pretty exciting, pretty, it's kind of like the track and field for business education, as we like to call it. Our recent history, in the last three years, we've been blessed with five national champions, including the two that you see with me today. Uh, Morgan and Ryan were national champions last year for business financial plan. We have 20 top 10 national placers over the last three years. We have five state officers elected over that time, including two national officers with the current sitting national FBLA treasurer. Uh, Will you repeat the last slide yeah. slowly? Okay. <laughs> Well, the next one even gets better if we just cheated and went ahead. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good grief. Well, last night it was coming back real easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't get it to go forward. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to do that for now. No, you. It's just the idea of it. to, for people to realize that this is a county school and what has been a achieved, as I mentioned to you, because of the sound instruction leadership, but also young folks who have to take advantage of that and make it work. You've ended up with, over that again, these are national. Yeah, and one thing that's interesting about FBLA, we, we are, this year we won our 12th consecutive state championship in the 4A level. However, when we compete in these events, we're competing against every level. So. Um, as an example of that, all the events that we compete in, if we have a state champion, they beat the best in the state regardless of level of school. So we actually went head to head with Grants Pass High School in 13 events and beat them in all 13. <laughs> I just say that. But <laughs> um, we compete against Centennial, the Portland schools, and all of the you know, Eugene and Salem schools that are very large. And when we win, we beat all of them. So it doesn't matter what level. So, when I say we have five national champions, we're talking about the best in the country of 250,000 students that are involved competing in that event. So these two young ladies competed last year against the, the 50 best in the country. Uh, the top two from each state get to attend that conference. They have a preliminary round. When they make the finals, it's the top 12 that go to the finals and 10 make the stage and get an award for the top 10 placings and they were the first in the country for that event. And it's a 15 page written report with a seven minute speech around a scenario for a business and their financial plan to obtain a loan from a bank. Thank wow. you very much. Okay. So we've had five national champions over this last three years, uh, 20 top 10 national placers. So 20 kids of, or groups have gotten on stage and placed in the top 10 in the entire country, regardless of size of school. Uh, five state officers and then two national officers elected over the last few years. We've had a total of five national officers in the last 12 years. 
so we're pretty fortunate with the success we've had. Um, at the beginning of this month, we attended our state business leadership conference where we competed for our championship. Come on now. I love technology. That's why I teach it. Okay. So this year, uh, we achieved uh, 47 total awards at the State Business Leadership Conference. What's significant is that we normally aim for 30 top 10 finishes. That's our goal on an annual basis, 30 top 10s. So just trying to get 30 kids on stage. We have 32 top five competitive event finishes this year, which is a pretty phenomenal accomplishment. We elected two state officers, including the youngest uh, state president in history, a 14-year-old sophomore. Um, <laughs> we have 25 students qualified in attending our national conference. Uh, coming up at the end of June. We have 17 award winners, 13 juniors won awards, 22 sophomores won awards, and 16 freshmen that were award winners, including several freshmen that were state champions. So the future looks bright, and we just completed our 12th consecutive state championship for FDLA, and we more than uh, tripled this score of second place. So we're pretty excited about <laughs> Pretty excited about our recent success. Again, you do what? We more than tripled second Triple place. Second place. Oh, yeah. um, last year, <laughs> last year at nationals, we were the only school from the state of Oregon to bring home a championship. We yes. brought home two. Right, three. three. We had three national champions. Last year. Track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been pretty neat, and what's really great about this organization is that we give kids an opportunity to lead. We believe in them, we give them trust, we tell them what it is that has to be accomplished, and the first reaction is generally, do you really think I can do this? Yes, I, can. I do. And we give them the confidence and the tools necessary to go out and get it done. And it's really neat to see kids rise to that occasion and work really hard for success. As much as I'd like to take credit for it, really I'm just a, a steering mechanism and help them go in the right direction to do the things that they need to do to be successful. And uh, it's been very, I guess impactful for me as well as it has been for the students. <clears throat> you know, the success that we've had is it's immeasurable in terms of how it feels as a school, how it feels as an advisor, and obviously for the students as well. But, ooh, good grief, you got to move for me here. Uh, that's all fine and dandy. But, you know, there's some things that our kids really uh, want to look forward to. And that's kind of the reason why we're here today. We'd like to talk to you about something that our students have started over the last year. Um, I've met with Cheryl last summer to talk about this a little bit. And uh, based on a conversation that we had uh, with Mike Murphy and uh, various others throughout that time, uh, we've actually put something in action. And so we're going to tell you a little bit about that. So this thing is not working the way it's supposed to. So what we do is So what I'd like to do uh, is talk to you a little bit about a problem that's been identified by our students and introduce you to Ms. Morgan Hansen. Uh, she is a senior and she is also our ASB president and valedictorian for Hingwell High School. Uh, writing a business plan is an amazing experience, but it ends. You go to a national conference, you present, and it's over. That's all it was. It was a plan, an idea, and quite a few hours of your life. And so when looking at this county that a lot of us, most of us, have grown up in and love, we saw these crippling issues, this problem that is really keeping our county from advancing. And as Ryland and I, um, our family's been rooted here since 43 with my great-grandpa, uh, we really wanted to change that so that we could come back to a place that prospered. And so uh, we found that what Josephine County needed was a foundation that was truly just about helping the county rise as a whole, not just one issue, but a foundation that would support the nonprofits already within the county and address all the issues that are widespread and become um, a funder of other projects and places like the Drug Court or a, a fund just for Josephine County Foundation that other nonprofits could write grants for. So, um, Press the mouse button. Other one. I'm going to have to scroll up to next. Sorry. It's not working. Technology is not my best. Well, that's okay because I'm, I'm the cause of boogering this thing up. So. <laughs> so when looking at our county, these are the types of statistics we see. Um, they're above both the state and national averages for unemployment. Um, we're 30% above Oregon's, we're 44% above the national level. 
59% higher um, in the state of Oregon for children living in poverty, and our student homelessness is through the roof. Um, I know that at our school alone we have over 20 Mekini Vinto students, which means uh, the state considers them homeless. So um, that's definitely something that's affecting our community. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. We also see that high school graduation is something that we're not achieving to the level that the rest of the state and the nation are. And we have um, a lower amount of bachelor's degrees coming back to our county and living here for 3% lower um, than both Oregon and the nation. And so that's something that we'd really like to change. Having people come back from college would really help our county move forward. So looking at this problem and these things that are affecting our students and um, everyone who lives in the county on a daily basis, uh, we found a solution. And, and uh, my sister, Rylan Hansen, who is a sophomore and the president of this solution, uh, will tell you a little bit about that. We came up with the solution of the Josephine County Foundation. As Morgan said, we didn't want to take over the nonprofits' jobs here, but we wanted to bolster them. We wanted to put money into them and um, help grow them. And the Josephine County Foundation lets us do that with its, um, with its model and its mission. Um, the solution was to create the Josephine County Foundation. And what makes it really unique is that it is student-led. Um, it gives students the opportunity to learn about nonprofits and philanthropy and grow in them. Maybe you just move closer to the mic. Okay. That, that um, the Justin County Foundation started out as an FBLA project. It was a business plan last year, and it was the highest scored um, business plan in the state. And as this year, as we looked at it and we thought about it, my sister and I and our partner, we wanted to make it a reality. We wanted to take this business plan, and we didn't want it to stop at nationals. We wanted to make it real. Um, and we came up with a mission, a model, and, um, and a structure. So this is our mission. It's to provide leadership to engage the community in developing solutions, strengthen nonprofits. Um, Morgan's going to talk to you a little bit about our organization and structure. This was the part of the foundation that we had to wrestle with a little bit. Um, a key part of our structure, as you can see, is the membership membership and so that um, is how we get our funding and so the membership model is that you can join it there's three levels of membership <coughs> it's a commitment over um, four, ten, so it's ten thousand twenty yeah, and then up so up to a hundred thousand dollars so you can become a member at those levels and then you become um, it's like owning a share in a company. So you vote and help us decide the direction we're going. We currently have three members um, with Dutch Bros. Uh, we're working out some kinks. We had to involve the other schools first, but they're going to become a member. Um, they're thinking in 2014. So um, moving forward with that, we have an advisory committee because what really makes Justin County Foundation unique is that it takes the enthusiasm of the youth, but we still need the guidance and wisdom from adults. So. Um, What's really amazing is the officer positions and how they are students. So as you can see, there's representatives, representatives from each high school that are open. Um, Grants Pass did not Grants Pass did not take their position. We didn't have anyone that wanted it, but we currently have a representative from Illinois Valley and two from North Valley. So uh, we really want the whole county to be represented because it's not just. Hidden Valley Foundation, it's Josephine County Foundation, so um, that's really what's key about the organization and structure of this foundation is that the students will be the one pushing forward, doing lake work, and really learning how we can change our community. So, um, projects completed. So far, what has the foundation done? It's been in existence for a little over a year now, and uh, we've given a grant to Hidden Valley FBLA Business Program, which allowed us to buy equipment to help us compete at state, we were really struggling with having the equipment we needed. So that was an $8,000 grant. Uh, we've done three years of Community 101, which is a really amazing program uh, where a group of students actually grant out money to the community. This year, 2500 went to the Boys and Girls Club, and they're going to use that to do their breakfast program on all school days. 
Um, we've given out $62,000 in FBLA and JCF scholarships. This is the third year of that, and there'll be seven more years where um, at least three scholarships are given out. I'm currently a recipient of that, so that was an amazing honor. Um, we had a free vision clinic held on December 1st, and that served 145 people from around our county. And what's truly unique about that is it actually dispensed glasses. Up until January of 2012, that was not legal in the state of Oregon, but House Bill 2312 changed that. So we were able to not only screen and check patient people's visions, but we were also able to give every single one of them a pair of glasses so that they are equipped to live their life at a higher standard. So. Uh, we helped the Sunny Wolf uh, Charter School raise funds for projects, so they needed a new roof, things like that. Um, that's very, that's an area of our community that's really in need, and so that school is helping quite a few students. We sponsored FBLA events at SBLC, which um, basically just means you get your name in the program and you, uh, the winners get money. When you win an event, you usually get about $100. And so that was a really great way, way to get our name out in the state. and get more kids to know about it and the adults that are there. So that's where what Justin County Foundation has done, and my sister will tell you a little bit about what we plan to do in this next year. As we just elected our new officers for the next year, um, which included the two new high schools, Illinois Valley and North Valley, these are the projects we hope to complete in the next year. Um, we did a vision clinic this year, as Morgan said, and we had three people from Illinois Valley, and they were actually um, crying when they were talking to me and thanking me. And so that really just um, showed us that we, there's a need out there. And we want to move the vision clinic there and have one there this year so that they don't have to drive here. Um, we would like to continue the Community 101 projects, but um, we would like to help fund the other schools, hopefully. We've funded our school for the last three years, but we'd like to reach out and fund the other schools in the county also. Um, we're going to continue the FBLA scholarships and the Joseph County Foundation scholarship. And we'd like to have a Wolf Creek Child Care Clinic, which is, um, we'll have stations, and we haven't worked out all the kinks yet, but have um, like a parenting class sort of thing going on. We'd like to give them free diapers and um, clothes, that sort of thing. Um, we want to have a grant writing clinic. Something that we're looking at with all students, we're looking in, we don't know how to write grants and we don't know really even what that means. And so we'd really like to bring someone here to teach us and other nonprofits in Josephine County how to write grants and so we can have more money in our community. Um, we'd like to make a needs assessment for the Josephine County Rural Fire Departments just to see what their needs are and then hopefully help them write grants for those needs. And then we also like to help the development of the career centers at the Hinn Valley High School, Illinois Valley, and North Valley High Schools. Right now we see that they reach out a lot to the college round students, but we don't see much of them reaching out to the technical students. We'd like to help them get job shadows and um, internships and that sort of thing. Oh, and something that isn't on there is, as you saw, we sponsored um, We sponsored the, the events at SBLC, but something that um, is really cool is that part of our foundation is actually going, they looked at sponsoring, they looked at sponsoring events at um, the national conference, but they saw that it was um, a lot of money and that the students in our county that they were competing in those events were already taken. And so they decided that from Hidden Valley High School, the students that get first, second, or third, they're going to give um, money to them and then also $500 to the charity of their choice in Justin County. So that's really something that's really exciting. Um, the future of JCF, <coughs> Dale Fisher is going to talk to you. So I'll try and wrap it up. I know we're probably taking more time than uh, we should have, but I'd like to tell you that what's really neat about this is being an advisor for this project and also uh, as one of the adult advisors for the foundation. It's neat to see kids take a hold of something and want to have a great part in their community. They have a voice, they want that voice to be heard, and they want to put their voice into action in our county. And uh, they hope that uh, as the commissioner group, you'll listen to them and that you'll support them and that uh, you will uh, kind of, I guess, beat the drums of uh, support of a foundation like this that's going to be student led. It's neat to see these kids getting involved in the community. One of the biggest problems that we've seen in, in the, the portion about the career center is extremely important. We have a history of basically 25% of our students head off to college. 
Most of those that do obtain a degree do not come back to our county because of lack of opportunity. Those that do go off, about half of them do not complete their second or third year of college. So most of them aren't even finishing. But the big glaring number there is that 25% on average from our county go to college. There's 75% that do not. And yet most of our education <laughs> programs in our valley have been stripped down because of budgetary constraints to the point that we focus on college-bound kids for everybody. We're failing 75% of our students in terms of vocational education and helping them understand what kind of opportunities exist for them to become electricians, to become plumbers, to get into the construction trades, or various other manufacturing jobs that may be available for them, helping to push them toward degree programs or to certificate programs that uh, RCC or various other opportunities are about. So we really want to reach out and help them, and that was one of the genesis and the thoughts around starting this foundation. The future, we need to recruit new members that want to contribute to our fund so that we can grant money out to nonprofits to solve some of these problems. We need to continue to build that endowment through memberships and also donations, and we're going to write grants for specific projects. We already have some grants in mind that we're going to apply for that will help with the career centers. We need to engage more community members and let them know what's going on with this foundation and what we're trying to do. And we need to develop long-lasting uh, partnerships for our foundation so that we can be strong in the future. We don't want this to just stop. We have a sizable amount of money in our account now that we're hoping to build, and we're also hoping to use portions of that uh, from uh, investment to be able to fund that into the community. So it's small right now, but we're hoping that's going to grow. Um, how can you help? Well, you can become a member. You can help encourage membership of uh, people in the Valley that are philanthropists. You can help spread the word about our foundation. You can help us get in contact with uh, people that you might know that would like to contribute or assist in some way, whether it be financial or skill. And you can become true partners with education and really support the programs like this at our school, at North Valley, Illinois Valley, at Grants Pass, even at New Hope, uh, that are trying to do things to help students learn how to lead. And that's the main thing that we want you to understand here. Students are leading, and uh, we want them to move forward with that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, we definitely will be back in touch with you regarding that uh, grant opportunity. Uh, that sounds really good. And if I may be so bold as to say that you're going to hear from us again, so I have a favorable opinion. And uh, it will be on multiple occasions, but there's a rumor among our board that uh, we're going to try and do some things to influence uh, legislation and legislators to uh, help us to do a better job of recruiting and bringing in businesses to our valley that uh, some type of industry to replace them. Great. So thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> wow. After that, we still got to get back to business, I suppose. So <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate that.